Got all your gear done? Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, good hunting, fellas. See ya. Five six to one in service. Starting mileage eleven thousand eight thirty one. Eleven thousand eight thirty one. One to five six ten four. Mileage eleven thousand eight thirty one. Six oh eight p.m. Detective unit five six in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, police recorder. You're riding in a detective unit. Black sedan. Radio buried in the glove compartment. Looks like any other car on the road. No identification as a police car. We're all dressed in civilian clothes. Driving, Sergeant Ron Perkins. Partner, Sergeant Kurt Walter. This is Detective Unit 5-6. While you're with us tonight, remember, you're listening just as it happens. And the people you meet are not actors. You see, this is it. This is real. This is Nightwatch. Night Watch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors, there is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, now on patrol somewhere in the field, and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. 5-6-1, come in. 1-5-6, to five, six. go ahead. 5-6 uh, on this abandoned. So far we've been unable to locate the complainant or the vehicle. Do you have any further information? 1-5-6, yes. We just had a second call. See the man at Wilson and Jefferson. That's a block north of you, uh, northeast corner. This is L.A. territory. Follow up and advise if you want an L.A. unit. Uh, Roger. It's uh, just about 10.30, and the first part of the evening we were staked out on a market. We, we had some, some reliable information that the market was going to be stuck up. Dispatch but uh, yeah, our information wasn't so reliable. Turn four. <laughs> Nothing yeah, happened. Right at the moment, we're on a call to meet the man about an abandoned child. We've uh, had a bit of trouble locating the car. Yeah, however, it should be up here right on this next corner. Now, this is uh, L.A. Uh, LA territory in here, and if there's anything to it, of course, we'll call the L.A. division. Now, there's a man standing over here on the corner. And obviously, he's the one that's waiting for us. He's all... Bundled up in a big overcoat. Very cold out tonight. Icy wind blowing off the mountains. Man pointing in a dark sedan. Looks like there's a little boy in it. Howdy. You the gentleman that called the police? I sure did. Where's the, uh, where's the mother? Uh, getting loaded. Hi, how are you, son? Hi, Who's this little one here? Oh, well, it's sister. Is that your little sister? Yeah. How old are you? Four years old. How old? Four years old. Four years old. How old's your little baby here, baby sister? Oh, I don't know. Not very old, is she? It's all sin. You all go in and have a bear. Are you with us? Hold it off. No. What, uh, what's the woman look like I, I, I in there? Just came in. Yeah. Is she by herself or what? I don't know. Is she inside? You know the woman inside at all? No. How do you know I she's mean, in there? I mean, this little boy is here all by himself. Yeah. He was crying when we first came in. Okay, well, thank you very much. We'll take it. Appreciate it. Sorry. All right. You know who we are? Yeah. We're police officers. Uh, you know that? Yeah. How old is your little sister here? Fine. How old is she? Uh, I don't know. Not very old. About three, four months old? Well, I don't know if she's that old. Are you cold in here? 
No, I have a blanket here right for me. How about putting the blanket over the little baby sister here a little bit, huh? Keep her a little bit warmer. Where's your mommy? She's in there. Where's your daddy? She, he's at home. He's at home. Your mommy here all by, her, by herself? She's in there. She's what? drinking. She's drinking? Yeah. Does she do this very often? Well, sometimes. How long have you been out here in the car? Well, I've been out here, um... Two... Two hours, or... No, three hours. Three hours? Yeah. Has your mommy come out at all during that time? Yeah, when she's ready to go home. I see. Okay. Where about do you live? Do you live around here? Well, we live at San Diego, and we... San Diego? Yeah, we are in another house now. I see. Your daddy's home? Yeah. Your mommy's in the, in the place in here drinking? Yeah. Okay, son. Bye. Huh? Bye. Goodbye. We'll see you in a little bit, okay? Bye. Back to Unit 5-6. Five, 5-6 six. Five, six to 1. Go ahead, 5-6. Five, 5-6, six. Five, six, we have a L.A. juvenile unit meet us at this location. Roger. They're doing okay. We're waiting for the juvenile officers to arrive. Yeah, she's in there about half loaded. Where's she sit? She's sitting at the bar? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, we're going on. Silver, you want to keep your eye on the children? We're going to the bar in a minute. Into the bar. There's six or eight patrons sitting on stools. A young couple sitting off to one side. It's the only woman in the place. Must be the mother. Woman, young, unsteady. Patrons you? escorting her outside. Friend, possibly the husband following up. How long have you been there? How long have you been in there? Mm, about. Five minutes, I guess. You've been there longer than five minutes. You've been there left longer than five minutes. No, I went in with him. We were talking. You the husband? Yeah. You're the father of the children? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my car next door. Yeah. You're the father of the children, are you? Do you have any identification on you, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, please. <clears throat> this is your husband, eh? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Do you have any identification on you? No. An operator's license? No. How do you drive the car without an operator's license? Yes, I have an operator's license. Where is it? So we just got married down in Mexico. How long ago? About six weeks ago. You got married, wasn't I? About six weeks ago? Yeah. I'm still under my other husband's name. Well, this one little child in here, the baby, was in there lying with no blanket over it. She's cold. I just came out a little while ago and covered her up and gave her the bottle. Well, we got a complaint over 20 minutes ago, so we know you've been here at least 20 minutes. We're going right home. She came down to get me. We're both going home. <clears throat> now, maybe you are and maybe you're not. We are. As far as I'm concerned, it's considering the delinquency of a juvenile. Oh, heavens no. It's endangering a child's wife, leaving a child in the car like that. Oh, no, Two children. Just, no, I was just sitting there waiting for her, officer. I was just sitting here waiting. Well, you're not going to drive any place. I'll tell you that much right now. You're too drunk to drive. You're not going to drive your car away from here. Uh, I can get somebody to drive. Can... Well, you'll have to stand by. Here. Yeah, sure. arise. You'll have to stand by the Los Angeles Police Department arise. You're in Los Angeles here, and we're just standing by till they get here. Them I don't want to get in any trouble, officer. We're not in any trouble so far. Since the fact the children are left out here, why don't you go over and look at your children and see if they're all right now? Cover the baby up, huh? Well, they're going over to check out the children. Is she all right? She's wet. Is 
your mommy there? Yeah. Is your daddy over here? No. Huh? No. No, that isn't his daddy. Oh, I see. How old is the baby? Four months. Four months old. How old's the big boy here? Four. Four years. L.A. juvenile officer is arriving. Hi. I'm Sergeant Perkins. Good work, man. This is Lee Sturge. Oh, uh, I don't know what you want to do with it here, but we got a call down here about 30 minutes ago. These two little kids left in a car. <clears throat> We've been down here up until about five minutes ago. We went in the bar and got the woman out. She never come out to look at the kids. The little kids said it had been here a couple of hours. Some stranger said it, a fellow called in and said it had been here quite a while. The little baby just lying there, nothing on her. Speak up, no blankets over her little boy. Well, she's been drinking. This is the husband by six weeks. He's half blue. So you do what you want with it. Let's go over with the juvenile officers and talk with the husband and wife again. doesn't matter. Are your kids? No. Who's the, who's the little baby, the three-month-old baby? Who's that one? Hmm? You married or not? Yeah, my daughter. I should get married. You want to take me to Culver City Police Station? I'm not interested in the Culver City Police Station. Ask if he's married. Huh? Possibly. I don't think you're married to him, are you? No. Hmm? No. You gotta take care of your two kids, lady. Where's, where's your husband? In San Diego. You a service man? No. Sergeant, can I see you a minute? Sure. Uh, tell you what I think we better do here. Uh, we'll send the lady and her children home in a taxi, but this guy's too drunk. I think we'll take him in and book him. It's okay with us. Yeah, we're going to get a petition to take these children away from you. Understand that? Just told her that. You mind what I told you now? Never brought the attention again. You go, if I ever do this again, I deserve it. All right, so you go on home. Really, I, I deserve it now. You you know, want to but I want the children. You want, you want to chase, chase around, you get somebody to take care of them kids. We're going to shove off. See you later, fellas. The L.A. officers will stand by until the taxi arrives. Amanda's being taken into custody. Mm -hmm. That sort of winds up our business here. Sure, kid, little fellow in car, wasn't it? Yeah. It's pretty hard to figure some people. Control one to car 40, clear, code 7, KMA 394. 5-6, clear. 1-5-6, clear. All units in the vicinity, car 51, on Washington Place, one block west of Evans. Man in the street threatening suicide, code 2. 5-6 to 1, we're in the area and rolling. 1-5-6, 10-4. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you back to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field, and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. Just a few more blocks to the scene. There's a man threatening to take his life in the street. Just a little bit of mist falling. The streets are just a bit slick. We have to sort of watch our traction. Rolling a lot in second gear. Sergeant Walter using the hand spotlight with a red lens over it that moves the traffic over. Well, here comes one of our radio cars swinging in from a side street. There are red lights glaring. Now they're swinging around, taking off in front of us. Should be up here in the, in the next block, I believe. Yeah, there they are. The radio car is pulling up. Sliding in behind. Man, 
man on the street pointing. Is that the man down there? Yeah. What's the trouble with him? Oh, he's, his, his wife pulled a wingding on him, and he's... Well, we'll have to go get him. So we'll get talk to you later. The young fellow, right out in the middle of the traffic. Two of the officers are chasing him. Marson Cameron. Walter and Perkins out there with flashlights trying to stop the cars before someone really gets hurt. Oh, they almost had him, but he darted away. There's a little bit of a break. It's it's late at night, and there's not too much traffic. Boy. Wow. I picked a great time to forget my flashlight. Well, the suspect is cut out on the street and taking off across a, a vacant lot. Cutting back this way, one officer grabs him. We're hurrying over. Two officers. Two officers struggling with him. Third officer's in there now. Well, you were just, well, I know, just man. settle down. Settle down, man. Post man. Let your hands off. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? We want to talk to you right here. Right here. I can stand here and talk. Sure, but I can't stand still. Just stand here and talk. I can't stand still. Let me just move around, around, will you? What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. Huh? I just... Oh, I'm broke up. You're broke up? What? About what? No, no problem. Let me talk to the psychiatrist. Maybe he can do something. You think you need a psychiatrist? Somebody needs a psychiatrist. What seems to be the trouble? Your wife and you have been fighting? Oh, they called uh, last night. Said I took a swing at her. But... Did you take a swing at her? She didn't get any marks on her. I don't know. I'm just asking. Have you been drinking? Sitting on the floor. He's oh, had some sedation. Huh? Dope. Right. No, take me, uh... no, take. How do you feel? You feel all right now? Sure, but wobbly. Yeah, yeah, well, that's understandable. Did the doctor give you some pills to make you relax or something? Is that yeah. yeah. Capsules, they were. Are you a neighbor? Yeah. Did we have a word with you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Neighbor, young fellow we talked to earlier. Sergeant Walter taking him aside. Perkins, uniformed officer, is walking the suspect around, trying to calm him down. Well, he found out uh, Monday some this gal's wife calling and told him that uh, her husband and his wife had been running around for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a real emotional guy. He's very unstable. Not uh, to get violent or anything, but I mean, he'd break down and cry, you know, he lets it come out. Mm-hmm. So then it all came to a head yesterday, and he took off, and then he didn't know where she was, and he called, and he couldn't get hold of her, and he called me. And uh, his wife called my wife this morning, said she was uh, up in Hollywood or someplace, which she probably wasn't. And uh, she said she was going to stay another night. Mm-hmm. She was going to stay away another night tonight. Mm-hmm. So then she called him a while ago, told him the same thing. Now, he wants to go look for him. I got the rotor out of his car, and his sister's got the keys, and he can't take the car, but he's going to show off. So his sis wants him, if it's at all possible, to take him in and someplace and hold him tonight. Well, it would be possible to take him in and book him as a psycho, but if we do, we'll have to take him to the county hospital. He'll be there for 72 hours and in an examination to determine if he is uh, mentally unstable. And if he is, he'll be committed. If he is not, he'll be released. Is there some way to take him out to uh, Sautel? Is he uh, He's a bad mm-hmm. Well, do you consider him from being a neighbor? Do you consider him I consider as a very rational? Very rational? Yeah. How do you account for this outburst now? When the officers asked him to halt, he kept on running. Well, he, he's got it in his mind. He's going to go find his wife and this guy. And probably kill him. If he could get hold of a gun, he probably would. That's what I mean. He, he probably would. But how many guys in this... in in uh, If you were in his shoes... That's right. I mean, uh, to me, it's silly. I mean, I'd just let her go. But he's, he's, he's nuts about the gal. He'd take her back right now if she walked up to him. He's just all mixed up, that's all. Well, do you believe his wife is running around? She admitted it. Oh, she did. And it's just a, it's just a foul up mess, that's all. But I don't think he's a psycho. But it's no good leaving him here at this point. No, we're not going to leave him. Uh, any, anything is better than that. can. Uh-uh. I, I, she won't condone it. And I, I would say, as a friend of his, it's no good for him. Mm-hmm. But he said a while ago he needed a psychiatrist. I wonder if he would uh, consent to going to Sawtell. 
if we made arrangements. I think you would. We don't want to use any more force than is necessary, but we might have to use it. Well, I, I think if I could talk to him and go along halfway, I mean, I don't think he'll get violent because he... All right, let's the two of us then talk to him. And you explain to him that if he doesn't go along with, uh, with the idea of going to South Carolina, we'll be forced to take him to the county hospital and book him in as a psycho. Let's uh, move back to the suspect. Running. If you'll just stop and think, it's the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. I might have found out. Well, no, you won't know. No, I won't. No, I'll never know that. So let's walk back now. Heading back to his house on the corner. Officer under each arm. We don't. We don't really don't think there's anything uh, wrong with you. It's just that we know you're a little mixed up. Now. Mm -hmm. On Monday night, I went out. Gun and See, you might get that feeling again, and we don't want to take that chance. I mean, for your good as well as the other fellow. Well, I ain't got my gun. Well, but you might just accidentally bump onto it again, and we wouldn't want that to happen. Why? Well, it would put you in a bad spot. I don't care about my I know you don't, but uh, but we do. It's our job to worry about you and about the other people, well, too. Well, it is my conscience and sure that I found out when I was taught him. We, we, don't want to, uh, we don't want to make the situation worse. It's bad enough as it is. I know. See, so far, you did no, no wrong. It's everybody out. Your conscience is still clear. But if you went out and did something that you'd be sorry for... I wouldn't be sorry anything of him. Do you have any children, sir? That's ten-year-old boy. It's all he's saying to you. I just didn't go to a drunk tank or something like well, that. We can't book you drunk, sir, if you're not drunk. If you're not drunk. Well, what's the idea? You're just a little mixed up and you need a little rest. We don't, we don't say there's anything wrong with you. You're not drunk and you're not psycho. You just, you wait right there for a minute. We think. All right, go ahead and get my pill. You got well, I'd rather you didn't take another pill right now because uh, if we go down there, they'd want to give you any medicine that you require there. Kurt, see you a minute. The Veterans Hospital won't take anybody on a direct admission unless it's an emergency. You better take him to our police doctor. You want to tell his friend? Keeper. The veteran's hospital won't take him on a direct uh, admission unless it's uh, unless he's an outpatient clinic and a real serious emergency. And uh, so he suggests that we take him down to our police doctor and have him examined. And if he decides that he should be committed, then we'll commit him to the county hospital. We can't do anything else. It would be it would be a crime if we didn't take him into custody. Well. Yeah, and I think it would be best for him. I, I think so, too. Well, we'll ask him to go along to the doctor now to be examined, and chances are the doctor can put it to him in such a way down there that he won't mind going down to the hospital. At least we hope he won't. Well, I hope he don't kick up a fuss now because he's getting his heels up about going. Well, we'll have to handcuff him if it's necessary. I hope we don't. Okay. Do you want to secure his house point? You want to bring your car down? No, I just need you. Perkins has taken the young fellow into his house to pick up some of his personal things. Let's go on in. Subject standing next to the stove in the kitchen. I'd like for you to go along with the officers down to our police doctor. Trying to coax him out without using the cuffs. Well, whatever the police doctor says, we'll go. Well, but, but, says, but I don't want to go to the end. Well, chances are... You will go down to the county hospital if you have to go anywhere. Okay? You come along with this officer here now. He'll take you down to the doctor. Thank you very much. Escorting the subject out to the radio car. Officer in the back to keep an eye on him. Officer Johnny Moss motioning for us over here. Yeah, he wanted some more uh, sleeping pills. I went in the bathroom and I put some bicarbonate soda in his sleeping pills, and we gave him those, so he thinks he's sedated, and actually he's in pretty good shape. So, uh, good deal. That's very good. Can you explain to the doctor and follow his recommendation. The hospital has been notified. Let's get back to our car again. It's kind of rough on the guy after ten years.
guys. Yeah, it sure is. What you have just heard is real, recorded as it actually happened on The Night Watch. We switch you now back to headquarters and the desk of Police Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's first investigation involving the children left unattended in a car resulted in a strong warning to the mother and the booking for plain junk of the man in the case. Although, as you heard, technically this incident took place just inside of the Los Angeles Territory. All of the officers agreed a warning to the mother would suffice this time as any further action would work a greater hardship on the children. The final case of the man who became emotionally unstable resulted in his being committed for psychiatric examination. Actually, he was released three days later. Rest and a chance to talk out his problem was what he needed to get his mental condition under control. Recently, I received a letter from a minister in San Francisco, California. He had just heard the case of a woman under the influence of alcohol who kicked over the desk as she went berserk in the police station. Perhaps you may remember this case. It was the minister's opinion that everyone drinking to excess should have heard every word of that recording. It not only showed the dangerous road they are treading, but the real behind-the-scene problems facing your police officers. The minister concluded by saying, Our work has much in common when it comes to maintaining public security. I hope in listening tonight you have come to understand just a little better the other fellow's point of view. If you have, then we have a meaning for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty on the Night Watch. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch is brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed. <laughs>